Hey guys. Hello. So what are you working on over here, Eddie? So uh, I thought we'd take a little bit of time to look at the transistor circuit of the week, number one. Oh, so like that was the event you did this week? Uh, yes. Can I guess you so. give people an idea what that was? So um, we were discussing, well, a bunch of the other folks were discussing in the IRC that when they design circuits around transistors, or circuits in general, it's a, a lot of it's by feel and not necessarily by um, doing the calculations and such. And so they thought, well, why don't we just go through a circuit a week and analyze the, um, I guess, the numbers behind it. So, you know, you would be able to combine both your feel and, like, technical expertise, I guess, you know, like knowledge of Ohm's law and, and all that other stuff. So, yeah. So the first week, um, we decided, well, the first month, I think, so far, we're going to be doing transistors. And, well, um, you said transistors of the week. Well, that's true. <laughs> transistor circuit of the week. So, uh, here are transistors. Woo! Um, so this is actually a NPN transistor where you have the collector, the base, and the emitter. Um, and the base is like where the small control goes in, so say like an audio signal. A small audio signal from a uh, microphone, what have you, goes in and it acts kind of like a gate. So when it is positive, then this um, the large current flow goes from the collector to the emitter, right? So here, somewhere up here is the power grid, here's ground. Um, and then it's also known, the collector is also known as the current source. So, yeah, that's the basics of transistors um, and I guess how they work. So we thought that for the first week we would look into a common emitter amplifier. And uh, this is kind of the basic setup of this. So if we look at this, uh, we've got an an a AC signal coming in, say in audio, which is easiest for us to understand. Um, here's a DC blocking capacitor, because capacitors allow, allow AC to go through, but not DC. And these two, R1 and R2, act as biasing resistors. And biasing, essentially, from what I understand, just has to do with like what it allows to go to the base but you well, guys that's essentially a voltage me. divider right yeah and it's setting the voltage at that middle point to want to sit at a particular voltage and anything that comes through c1 is gonna wiggle that right and from what i understand um the voltage at base has to be over 0.7 volts for most NPN transistors um, in order to cause current to go from C to E, from the collector to the emitter. So, yeah. Um, and Red explained what these other resistors were, but I kind of forget. This one I think is based on a whole, RL is based on a whole bunch of different uh, things, but RE is placed to kind of stabilize the circuit. Um, so that like the transistor itself isn't the sole determinant of the gain of the uh, circuit. So the transistor has a property called HFE or other, otherwise known as beta. And any, in any given transistor, it can what, like range wildly. So for the one that we were working with, the 2N3904, um, it can range from 30 to 300 based on, uh, based on, what's it called? Like temperature, um, you know, so if you blow hot air on it, you could end up with a significant drop or significant increase in terms of the current that actually goes through. And if, if such small things affect the HFE of, uh, this transistor, then you want something to stabilize that, and that's what re this resistor would be for. So, 
that is that. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll show you the, the circuit that we ended up looking at, and this is one done by Whisker. Um, it's wait. an experimental circuit. Correct. And uh, a lot of people are like, what? Where's RE? So clearly we don't have any uh, stabilizing resistors, but it still does work. But what this just means is that if um, a whole bunch of people build this circuit, then depending on their transistors HFE or beta, uh, the amplification of this particular amplifier could vary wildly. So um, we have a couple of biasing transist or biasing resistors R1, R2, um, and I think it's pretty much here is just a repeat of the stage. So this is again another. C, the, these C2s are both DC blocking capacitors, um, as well as I believe C3. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we just had the circuit up, and uh, I just wanted to show you guys this really neat circuit simulator um, on falstad.com slash circuit. And you can see here that it's pretty much the circuit that we had um, for the preamp. And I just chose an MPN transistor. It's not necessarily the 2N3904. Um, I've got the 5-volt five, uh, five power rail. I've got ground here. Um, I have the AC signal from, say, a microphone. And most microphones, it seems, gives out uh, output voltages of around 10 to 20, I would say, 10 to 20 millivolts. But first, I'm going to let you guys first see how it acts as uh, as these transistors. So if you don't already know how transistors work, then you can see here. So you see that this AC signal is going back and forth, and every time it goes forward, the um, you see current going from the five volt line down to the ground. So you kind of see like it acts like a like a gate system, um, and then likewise too if you see here on past this uh, resistor and this DC capac or DC blocking capacitor, every time it goes forward, then we have current going through. But you also see that a larger amount goes through and um, there's a bit of amplification. So, and it actually doesn't even really look like amplification right now because we're going from 5 volts to 4.58 volts, so I'm going to bring this back down to 20 millivolts. Okay. If that worked. There we go. It takes a little bit of time for the system to kind of balance out, but what you see is we go from 20 millivolts here in, and we are at about 3, 2.8, Two point seven five, give or take, volts. So there is amplification, um, and that's good. Uh, but you also see that there's a little bit of clipping here, and so that's something that you want to account for. But remember that simulators are not always accurate, and um, so take a grain of salt when you look at a simulator. So one of the things uh, that the the guys and folks in the IRC discussed was how. Uh, one, there aren't any, there's no REs, so that it doesn't stabilize uh, the circuit. And one way you can tell, I think, is by looking at the Q point. And the Q point is known as the quiescent current point. Um, and that's essentially, from what I understand, it's how much current the uh, system draws when nothing is going to it, when no... Um, no power is going to it now. The Q point might be something different, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this voltage to zero. Okay. And we will see that um, the Q point here is at 1.02 or 1 volt essentially. Uh, and what you ideally want is for your Q point to be halfway between ground and your main line, so your main power line. So we actually want it about 2.5. Um, so in previous experiments, and you can experiment this too, we'll send you a link to this circuit, but 
um, changing these resistors to like ridiculous amounts, ridiculous numbers like 200k didn't change it. But if I change, say for instance, the HFE of this from 100 to 50, you can see that there's an increase in the quiescent current. And if I do it even more, something, I don't know, ridiculous here. You'll see that we're getting better to a to a, that Q point that we want, 2.5, but that's based on this swing of the HFE. And with the swings of the HFE being so variable, dependent on temperature, you really actually don't want that to happen. Um, so actually, this is a first experiment for me. I haven't... So I have HFE is 25, I think. Yeah. I'm going to see what happens if I add in a resistor. Okay. And we'll start again. Woo! I'm going to increase the simulation speed so it stabilizes out a little bit faster. So our Q point looks to be at about 2.065V. Give or take. I'm going to change this again and we'll see if that, how much that changes the Q point. Alright, so it still changes it. So, I don't know. <laughs> Technically, I think these are supposed to make it so that it stabilizes the whole thing, but I might be trying to stabilize the wrong parameter. Uh, but it's just kind of interesting to see how changing the different, different aspects work. So. I'm going to play with a little bit more. Um, so stay tuned, and uh, yes. we'll be doing another circuit next week with all the peoples. Yes. And I'm sure it will get just as nerdy. I think it's a two LED uh, flasher from... Two, uh, the dual LED flasher from Forest Mims, I believe, is what we're going to be what we're gonna People will be, be chit-chatting about that all week in the IRC. You can find a link to that in the video description as well as links to everything related with this past week's thing. Yep. Yep. That's it for us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.